Hi everybody, we're at the Priscilla Fowler Gallery in downtown and this is Joseph Watson and we're going to look at his art and talk about the stories behind it and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Okay, so uh, you went to school in California and uh, what inspired you to become an artist? You know, I was just that kid who never got picked on the basketball teams, so I had no choice but to just develop my craft. Just draw characters and things like that as I watch all the other kids play and have fun. So yeah, I was pretty much, I guess, forced to be an artist. And, and I'm glad I was. And uh, I know you did design for like video games and things, uh, very illustrative work. Uh, so did you uh, plan that ahead of time? or? Yeah, I've always wanted to get into the uh, entertainment industry, so just doing stuff for video games, toys, uh, also like illustration for graphic novels, uh, kids' properties, things like that. So yeah, I went to school in Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, California, and pretty much majored in illustration, minored in fine art, and you know, being in class, uh, back then I was all about, you know, learning the stuff that was, you know, that video games were made of. It's like all about that and didn't understand why I had to take fine art painting classes. Little did I know that when I got into the video game industry, uh, I got a little bit tired of you know, doing the video game stuff and I used fine art as my outlet. So I would come home late at night, work on some paintings and kind of one thing led to another. And what do you know? <laughs> Here in the Priscilla Fowler yeah. Gallery, yeah. So I love your characters and the, the art, oh, all, the, all the people. So is that a lot of observation? And yeah, so basically this is inspired by visiting favorite coffee shops around town. So I would show up, bring a sketchbook, and see like, I don't know, five or six interesting people drinking coffee. And I would sketch them on my book, then bring that sketchbook home and put them into this particular piece. That's really cool. And, uh, you know, before you know it, I had like, I don't know, 70 or 80 characters in the crowd with uh, all these cool little stories going on. So a sketchbook is important to you? Right? Oh, very, yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay, so uh, your work, again, it's, it's very illustrative. And you, I know you have a story behind all your work. Yes, definitely. And can you kind of tell me a story behind this, the main street? Yes. So uh, this particular piece here is based on this exact street that we're on right now, which is Main Street. So Main Street is known for a lot of art galleries, vintage clothing shops, bars, things like that. Uh, old classic cars, vintage uh, Vespa scooters, and I really wanted to capture all of those neat artsy things in, in one scene. Uh, yeah, I used acrylic paint on canvas and just really tried to capture the warm Vegas, you know, creative side of downtown Main Street. It's very, and like I said, uh, and this is a compliment, it's very illustrative, the yep. line work mm -hmm. and everything you're very, is very evident in your work. It's very nice. Thank you. Uh, can you tell the difference between, uh, like, let's say a painter and mm -hmm. a, a illustrator? Kind of, like it's, the style as, as part of the style. Yeah, so, uh, well, back, like I would say, like 20 years ago, there was a uh, pretty big difference, in my opinion, between more of the illustration style and the fine art style, but over time, they kind of merged together, where, you know, almost anything be, could become an illustration. Oh. No matter what the medium is, you know, uh, I remember back like 20 years ago, like folk art was a big influence in oh. illustration. Also, you know, anything like cut out paper, uh, photography of sculptures, all these things could be illustrations, you know, because they tell stories. Uh, my stuff, however, yeah, it's kind of like a mix between both. I like to use a lot of the painterly. Oh yeah, I really love on. the faded background. Oh yeah, because yeah, I don't want the eye to focus on these areas, so I tend to leave it very loose. And it's very if you see this, the it's it's very painterly, but there's very definite areas where he's done the like line drawings in it. It's really neat. Especially these two characters. So uh, <laughs> this lady here, my signature big blue lady, she would be in blue if I you know, worked yeah. on her more. But she's just like graffiti line work, and she's flirting with this guy over here. So he's <laughs> another street art sort of character. So you know he has this little card up, and he's showing it to her. 
So they live on these walls. Oh, so basically. it's like a it's a love story between the signage on Main Street. Yes. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Can you talk about uh, this one here? The yeah, uh, of course. So uh, this piece that you see right here is titled "Bound to Survive," and the whole idea it's about when two living creatures have something in common and they bind together. Like in this case, there's two octopus right here and they found each other under the ocean and they had a lot in common. They love music, they love creativity, so they're just like dancing in the deep seas. So since they have a lot of co in common, they bound together and they're bound to survive in life because life is more better when you surround yourself with people who have a lot in common with you. Yeah, I really like the, the, the vintage radio and the yeah, like that's a nice little 1930s sort of thing going on there. You know, uh, also uh, use some heart shapes on the camouflage of this octopus right here. Oh, nice, yeah. Just, and this one here has a little heart right there. So that's kind of the thing too. They were both kind of looking for some friendship going on there. Oh, and, nice. Uh, yeah, this is acrylic on wood. And actually, uh, I displayed this at Life is Beautiful back in 2018. Oh, it was wow. a huge, uh, what was it, the Crimes on Canvas show. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool to be amongst uh, all of the talented oh, yeah. artists there. Yeah. Well, you deserve to be there. But uh, do you prefer to work on wood over canvas or? You know, it really depends. Uh, so basically, when I work on canvas, it's typically a larger size. And I like to go more over like looser brush strokes. Mm -hmm. But when I, get, when I like to get more illustrative, I like a harder surface to paint on. So I won't have that much reflex and bounce with the brush so I can have more control over the, de the details. Oh. Also with can canvas, you have the interwoven sort of uh, patterns on it. So that doesn't allow me to get, in some cases, uh, the detail that I want. Yeah. So it really depends what where I want to go. So this one's on wood, I was able to get more details and things like that, more control over the bounce of the surface. And the other pieces are acrylic on canvas because I want it to go a little more looser and expressive. So you you did a series of children's books, and this is Go Go Greta. Can you explain yes. the what was yeah. going on? Go Go Greta. Uh, Go Go Greta was written by Dana Satterwhite, who's the writer slash author for the book series. And uh, Dana uh, discovered my work when I would have my gallery down at the Arts Factory, and uh, he didn't actually see any of my children's book work. He saw more of my urban stuff, but saw some sort of connection and he showed me the script to the project, read it, and was like, you know, this is awesome. I would love to work on these uh, children's book projects. So yeah, we, uh, we did three children's books, uh, book one, two, and three. This is from book number three. And Go Go Greta, yeah, she just goes about her life achieving the impossible. And, you know, the whole thing is we want kids to be really believe that they can do anything in life. If Greta can do it, you can do it as well. Yeah. So these are some of the characters from my latest book, my newest book actually I uh, worked on with uh, Joe Frazzetti. So I hopped on as illustrator and there's gonna be uh, five books in the series. So this is from book number one. And this just came out about, I would say like two weeks ago. And in the next couple days, I'm starting on book number two for this particular book. And it's all about using the power of intuition, uh, this first book. So uh, yeah, kids can tap into that inner power and unlock. Uh, you know, that power to do anything they want to do, also. Nice. And you did this uh, all uh, as a painting? Any of it? Did you do any of it on uh, the computer at all? All of it. You did all of it on computer? Right. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I even have like a time lapse of these where. Have you used uh, Procreate? No, no. For uh, <laughs> iPad? No, no. Oh, okay. I have a very old iPad. So. Yeah, uh, let me see if I can do but, a time lapse on this. Because uh, I tell students it's important to learn traditional art first before you start doing digital. Oh yeah, Do you agree yeah. With that? Uh, totally. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so uh, here's yeah. kind of a walkthrough right here of how you. Oh, it's you actually drawing. There. Yeah. So I imported in uh, an approved uh, quick color mock-up that I did for my client Joe Frazetta, and after that. You could see me switch back and forth with the words on the pictures and also the characters too because I like to check to see how well the, the images are working 
with the the words because you know it's illustrating a story. Yeah. Um, so you'll see uh, what I did first was a character lineup. So that includes all the characters in the story. And what happens is occasionally I'll show the character lineup on the screen as I'm rendering along because I want to make sure all of my characters are on model to make sure they're accurate. Uh oh. Yeah. And uh, since this is a book, you'll see the template pop up every so often because you want to make sure the characters aren't being cropped off or falling into the, the gutter, you know, the centerfold. Yeah, I page. always have to tell the students to yeah. keep things away from the like, exactly. quarter inch around the outside. Otherwise, yep. you will know, get cut off. So, so the shirt is uh, your design, right? Yes, Cycle of Life. And Very if you look nice. at the bike real close, it has two flat tires because, you know, sometimes in life it's uh, <laughs> almost like riding a bike with two, pl two flat tires. But you know what? You got to keep pedaling. <laughs> yeah, you got to keep pedaling. Great.